If you struggle to create realistic materials in DeFi Render, make sure to watch the video all the way through the end to master materials once and for all. Before getting to configuring the materials, you need to make sure that it is seamless as in it doesn't look fake once the tile is repeating and also that it is a PBR material, which basically stands for physically based rendering, meaning that it mimics real life physics. Now, if I want to use an external material, I usually go to a site called ambientcg.com, which I am not sponsored by them. And in this instance, I will choose this wood material. I will choose a 2K JPEG option because we do not need more details than that as of now. When you open the file that you downloaded, you will notice a bunch of different files and photos. All of those have their own purpose. However, I do not want to bore your brains out with a bunch of nerdy stuff that none of us need to know. What we need to know though, is that by selecting the material picker button, clicking the batch import icon and selecting all the maps, D5 will automatically place all the maps in their respective section and we do not need to deal with any of the technicalities. This makes everything so quick and easy and I think that's what architecture rendering is about. Now, in case you want to tweak these and have more creative freedom in how your materials are set up, here's a super quick non-nerdy guide on what each of the sections under the material tab are about. The diffuse map is basically the base color which serves as the indicator on what color the material has. We can tweak the base map through the base color map sliders. The normal map is what determines where we need depth in the materials. The specular map helps with the reflection of non-metallic materials. The roughness map shows how rough or smooth the material is, and the dark area of the map is where the material looks smoother and reflective, while the lighter areas show where the material is rougher and less reflective. The metallic slider determines how metallic the material is, white is where the material is fully metallic, and black is where the material is not metallic. And also, ambient occlusion enhances the shadows and corners of the materials. And once you set up all the material maps, you can click this icon which saves your materials to the local library. And now, anytime you want to use it for another project, you don't have to go through this whole process all over again. Speaking of libraries, you can also use the 2000 materials that D5 has in this library. All of them ready for you to be used with just one click. And I highly suggest that you use these unless there is something specific that you cannot find just for the sake of speed and practicality. Something very useful that D5 offers as well is the AI material generator. This means that as long as you have only the color map or diffuse map, D5 will generate all of the maps for the other sections as well in just one click. In case you also need to change the size of the material, you will also be able to do that under the UV section by clicking and holding up or down in the stretch option. At the top of the material section, you will also notice another option, which is the material template. Let's go on one by one on where you can use these for. The subsurface scattering material is useful for semi-translucent materials like jade, vax, or skin. You can see some of these examples and how it is useful in a before and after setting. Another instance where this option is super useful is in translucent facades, like the one you see in the screen right now. The transparent material type is very useful for glass material and is pretty self-explanatory. It has opacity and it will just be transparent. Uh, the water material type is useful when we are setting up pools, lakes, or anything similar. We can change the effects of the depth of the water, the intensity and size of waves, etc. The flowing water is basically the same thing, but is actually used for flowing water like tap water, a waterfall or a stream of water. The car paint material is exactly what it is named after. It applies clear coat and it just makes cars look a lot more realistic. The displacement material type adds yet another layer of depth and this is especially useful for materials like brick and you can see the difference between a brick material with and without a displacement map. The cloth material type is especially useful for curtains or any other type of fabric and you can just switch to that and you will see that the material will feel a lot more lifelike. The custom alpha material type is useful for when we want certain parts of the material to look transparent. For example, this fence right here where I can add an opacity map and it automatically works wonders. Next up, the multimedia material type. Now this one is one of my favorites, especially when doing walkthroughs. This is very useful for TVs to make the walkthrough look more dynamic, like right now where I added a video of mine in the screen. You can choose to make the TV affect the sea light or not. However, this is not the main reason why I like this so much. If you actually have a video of a smoke or fire with a black background, you can simply upload the video and make the background transparent and now you can have steam, fire or smoke inside your project. This is very cool and very helpful to make spaces look more livable 
in walkthroughs. The foliage material type is useful for leaves or other types of vegetation. However, if you are using the D5 asset library for vegetation, you will not need to worry about this because those options are already set up for you. And then finally, the grass option. This is where you can convert a 2D texture into a 3D one and simulate grass. Not only that, we can try all of those different types of grass and modify their color, their height, their density, etc. This is one of the best grass material options that I've tried in any software for sure. You can also make any material emissive. This is especially useful for an object like recessed lighting, where you have placed a spotlight at the outside, but the inside still looks like it is turned off. You can simply select the surface from which the light is supposed to come out, turn it to emissive, and now it will look a lot more realistic. As an extra tip, I highly advise you to use the rounded corner options. In real life, there are barely any 90 degree sharp edges, so we shouldn't have as much of those in our renders either. For this reason, you should select your material and click on the rounded corners option. This might seem like a small tweak, but once you do it for your whole render once, you will notice that you cannot go back to 90 degree angles again because it just makes a huge difference once set up. In case you want to see how I render a fully serial project in D5, watch the video right here.